it's a lot easier to break trust than to build it. Definitely a context like the US where you have this huge and very deep social rift that probably has been growing in the, in the last few decades. You can use strategies like, you know, um, sort of dialogue processes. Um, and I would say almost even like contact strategies, you know, in, in conflict zones where you have different groups that have, you know, either inflicted or received huge levels of violence from the other. And you know, the, the different groups are segregated geographically and they don't ever kind of encounter each other. It, it makes it easier to build a kind of stereotype, um, you know, of the other um, and dehumanize that other. If you put people together, then, you know, these, this is harder to do, it humanizes people. If you take a classic legislature in the US, uh, it's going to be mostly lawyers, people with a JD, mostly white people, mostly wealthy people. It's not terribly diverse along some, some important categories. Um, in, in a random sample, you have all kinds of people who would never have the time normally to, to join political activities or, or be interested in them or would never dream of, of like, they, they don't just don't think they can do it and that they are legitimate to do it. That's what a citizen's assembly is about. It's about meeting other ordinary citizens in a friendly, respectful context where you're given access sometimes to experts to learn more about a topic, um, where facilitators are there to make sure, you know, dynamics stay polite and inclusive. Um, it's, it's really a rewarding experience for most people. I think the problem is, and the real worry going forwards, that ultimately there are a lot of people who have become almost radicalised by these online conspiracies and you can try and have those conversations with your family member or with someone that you trust and I think trust is the key vector here that can help but when that distrust runs so deep uh, it just leaves these people hyper vulnerable to, to far right groups to other kinds of um, online movements particularly that exploit their distrust. What we need to do is get people in a position where they're able to make better trust judgments. I think that means maybe changing some ways in which the media works, particularly perhaps regulating some parts of the social media world which is particularly prone in putting out fake news and misinformation because that clearly distorts people's judgments. I think within schools and colleges and more widely in society, we should encourage the processes of critical thinking so that people are willing to challenge and think through how they make a judgment about a particular issue. I think we also need politicians to focus on building relationships with their voters rather than simply just focusing on them at election time and trying to win their votes.